Hi everyone, Marla Miller from MarlaMiller.com presenting our 82nd Book Brew Critique. Okay. Um, this one is a redo and um, I'll just spend a minute or so talking about redos and private critiques. What I've discovered, and it's actually been by accident, is that um, people actually prefer, or a lot of people prefer, private critiques. Now they cost $25, but it, it doesn't seem to be a stumbling block for people who um, regard their privacy or don't want to share the contents of their query, perhaps may not want to share um, the craft level of the query at this point. Whatever the reason is, um, people are requesting them. And when they do, of course, I'm going to do them um, because MarlaMiller.com is a business. And um, while I'm delighted to offer free book query critiques to my subscribers, each, each of you gets one, um, kind of nice to make a little money. So um, this is a redo, and redos are $10. And um, with no further ado, I think I can move this right in here. Is this Yeah. OK, uh, we'll, I'll look into this one. Uh, dear Blank, whenever Kelly Richards considered the consequences of having sex, she figured on a grounding in the talk. Having a killer sorcerer stalking her, not so much. Kelly's first sexual encounter with the boy she loves awakens her ancestral powers. She's a witch, and her family's got serious baggage. For centuries, the sorcerer, Valeri, has hunted down and pested the most adept members of her line, often resulting in their deaths, and he's coming for Kelly next. Delay's talent of draining magical energy from his victims and, claim, and claiming their powers for his own has made him the most dangerous sorcerer in history. But to be truly invincible as master of all the elements, he must wait for Callie's magic to fully mature. This gives her some time, but not much. Callie gathers a coven to fight Valari, but their inexperience puts them at deadly disadvantage against the powerful sorcerer. Their vulnerability is brought home when Valari murders Callie's human boyfriend in an effort to test her abilities. It, oh, human boyfriend in an effort to test her abilities. It's up to Callie now to become the witch she was born to be. Because if she fails to master her powers before Belay's seizes them for his self, the world will be his con, his to control. Cry of the Witch is a 106-word YA urban fantasy, commercial fiction, general fiction, or mainstream genres. This is a single submission, yet has not been submitted to any other agency. Further information is available upon request, including a full synopsis. I eagerly await your response to my project. Thank you for the free time and consideration, etc. Okay, <clears throat> sorry for the stumbling, but that name, B-E-L-L-A-R-Y, and of course I pose this. Um, I don't know, gave me trouble. Um, a couple of things. Now, this is a redo, and I will tell this writer right now that she had did it. Pretty darn good. Um, a couple of things, though. This needs a really good line edit author, so make sure that you um, don't confuse contractions for other words, etc., etc. So go through this because I picked out uh, one, two, three, four, five um, right off the bat. I mean, I've only read this twice. So you want to make sure, because you're ready to send this, and you want to make sure that you've got this just, I mean, perfect, or as perfect as you can make it. Okay, that's number one. I like it. I get it. Um, but now I'm going to get picky, because see, we're close. Now remember, quick query critique listens for speed bumps. If there aren't many speed bumps, then I look for content. Then I can get even, you know, then I can get more specific. Uh, your first sentence here, um, she figured out a grounding in the talk. Um, I would, I would um, do a little bit more on the ground. She figured on, on you know, on being grounded because that means her parents are going to ground her. And the talk, you might want to put the talk in quotes. Um, I would. Okay, um, that's number one. Number two. When she says in the first paragraph, having a killer sorcerer stalking her, not so much, um, you might want to mention his name again, Valeri. Um, having the killer sorcerer Valeri stalking her, not so much. You might want to, because then it flows all the way through, because you named him in the second paragraph. Okay, uh, that's number two. Number three. Uh, 
on the last paragraph. Cry of the Cry of the Witch is a 106 word YA urban fantasy, commercial fiction, general fiction, or mainstream genres. So I, when I read that the first time, I laughed because um, you're throwing everything in there but the kitchen sink. Um, if this book is um, is has the voice, uh, if your protagonist is a kid, a teenager, and I'm assuming yes, because if she's getting grounded to have for having sex, she's in high school. Um, if so, in that case, this is a YA urban fantasy novel. Now, uh, that said, I don't see much urban fantasy in it. I see the fantasy, but I don't see much urban fantasy. Again, it's not my genre, so you could have this spot on. But um, if this is urban fantasy, I think there's got to be a little something in there that suggests that it's urban fantasy as opposed to fantasy. I could be wrong. Um, so it's an urban fantasy. It's not a mainstream. It's not a general. It's it's one. So name the genre and stick with it. Why do I tell you that? Because um, if you don't do that, then agents are going to think that you are fairly inexperienced. And it's okay to be inexperienced, but um, you don't need to be that inexperienced. So just tell it like it is. Um, also, I eagerly await. Get rid of eagerly. Never adverbs in the plural. Just get rid of them. Um, they don't do anything but really weaken Attention. Um, I also have an agent that um, I would like to rec recommend that you pitch to. So if you send me an email, I will send you the name of that agent. Um, and um, that's it. I think it's good. You've done a really nice job. You're almost ready to go, but get really picky now about um, making this perfect, perfect book. Okay, till next time, be watching.